G'day Australia, Coram E here. It's been a little while since I've done a speaker tutorial, but here we are fitting a set of Sony split component speakers into a Hyundai Accent. Now, this Hyundai Accent has just recently had a Sony head unit upgrade as well, so we've got plenty of power on hand to power a set of aftermarket speakers better. You'll find the original unit in the vehicle doesn't really have the power that it needs to drive a set of aftermarket speakers properly, but once you've switched out for an aftermarket unit, they're a little more powerful and will push this an aftermarket set of speakers uh, to the point that they need. So let's get started. First things first, I'm going to um, show you this as I go. I'm not setting up the tripod today, I just couldn't be bothered. So we're just going to quickly do it with a handheld phone. So I'll do a bit, show you a bit, do a bit, show you a bit. First we're going to release the door trim off the door and to do that we need to pop open this little screw cover here and this little screw cover down there. The best tool to do that with is a small pick tool. Now we've got toolkits on the website that have these pick tools as well as panel removal tools. They're a good way to get it done. We can buy these from like Ultronics and JCAR for 15 bucks for a nice little set. So you're gonna get the, carefully get the pick tool in there and just uh, pop open that panel and expose the screw. And the same down on this little one. Expose that screw like that, then we're going to remove the screws and pull the door trim off. Let's do that now. All right, those screws are now removed just with a Phillips head screwdriver, and then the door trim simply pops away. If it's a little tight, you want to kind of shock it off. So grab the, the door, two hands are better, but I've just got the one here, and we'll shock the door trim off. And then it's just a matter of lifting it up. So once all those panels are out, you'll see a bit of movement. Sorry, once all those clips are out, you'll see a bit of movement there. We just need to lift the door trim up, which I'm going to do with my knee. Ah, it's going to be tricky with one hand because of this little rig. There we go, manage that. And then you just lift the door trim up and off. Now it's free from the door and we can unplug these connectors and get it out of our way. All right, the door trim's out of the way now. We've gone and, well, we've hung it up uh, there clear of the car so we don't knock it over or damage it. And what we now need to do is liberate the original factory speaker. Now this is the case with a lot of factory speakers. It is pop riveted in, you can see the rivets here. So we have to drill those rivets out with a drill. Uh, we're going to drill the rivets and that will release the factory speaker out of the way. And then we can mount in our aftermarket mounting ring that we have here, which is going to replace that and then let us fit a good quality six and a half inch speaker, in this case the Sony's. Now we've drilled out those rivets, that speaker can be completely removed and unplugged. Now, you can't just mount the speaker back, well, you can. You could just mount the speaker in this ring here and screw it straight to the steel, right? But you don't want to. You want to space it out the correct amount with a specific spacer, uh, because that brings it up to the level to sit in the right spot against the door trim, so that the sound will project out correctly. If it's mounted back straight to the steel, the sound can be a little bit trapped in the door trim because it's sitting back from the uh, door trim grill itself. So get the correct spacer on. They cost like next to nothing. We've got them all included in the kit for you anyway. And uh, we're gonna mount, we're gonna screw that on manually uh, to fasten that up now. So I'll show you that now. The spacers themselves come with new fasteners to attach this to the door. Okay, so we've mounted that ring up with the included screws and, well, bolts, uh, nuts and bolts that come in the packet. And then the nut just goes on the back here and you fasten those up and that gives us a good, solid mounting platform for the speaker. I've skipped ahead a couple of steps and gone right ahead and mounted the crossover and the wiring. So this component here comes with the speakers. It's different with different speakers, our Hertz packs, our MTX packs and uh, Clarion packs have all got a smaller one of these. The Sony's got the biggest one, this is called a crossover. It splits this sound from the mid bass driver and the tweeter which mounts up the top. Now, it comes plug and play as a part of this kit and it already has adap an adapter included to connect there to the factory speaker connector. So that was the connector that was plugged onto the old speaker. We've plugged it off there and plugged it into this adapter that we included for you as a part of this kit. I then cable tied this into place here. This is a soft area of the door. There's nothing behind that. And that means when the door trim goes back on, it can press against that and there's enough space to accommodate it. Now, the only thing that I'm not gonna show you in detail here, leave a little bit of mystery for you to figure out, is mounting up the tweeter itself. 
So this has been pre-mounted now onto this panel, uh, into the factory, just over the top of where the factory tweeter used to be. So I've uninstalled the factory tweeter from behind there, but there wasn't enough depth or space in there to fit the new Sony tweeter in that space. So we've mounted it on top. Uh, now using the little angle mount that comes with the Sony speaker, this is actually gonna angle the sound back towards the primary listener, the driver, and give a little bit better acoustic exposure anyway. Tweeter sound, high frequency tweeter sound is very directional. The more it's pointing directly at the ear, the better you will hear it. So the factory tweeter locations are actually not pointing at your ear at all. When that door is closed, they're pointing sideways. You need to be point it to be pointing back towards the listener. So this tweeter mounting is now superior for better acoustic performance. Now, that's pretty much it. All we have to do is uh, put in the mid. I'll show you that step, and then we can reassemble the door. All right, that mid base driver is now mounted. We've plugged it in, obviously, and then mounted it into that mounting ring. Let's show you that up close. So that is fully professionally mounted with the correct spacer in the correct way. The only way we could have done this any better and any differently is by adding the Elite Speaker Install Kit, uh, also available on the website universalfuse.com and at the Audiocom stores. That Elite Speaker Install Kit is a little kit of sound deadening material that gaskets around the speaker and behind the speaker itself. This is most important when the speaker is amplified. Powered off head unit power, it isn't crucial, but it's still a good idea. This client opted out for it, but uh, by putting that Elite Speaker Install Kit in, you will get 10 or 15%, maybe more performance out of your mid bass, as well as reducing rattles in the door and increasing your ride quality a little bit because it will reduce ambient reverberations and road noise from your door area. So the Elite Speaker Install Kit, highly recommended. I will try and get a link for it popping up here somewhere, either on the video or in the comment section below. And uh, that's it, now we're done. This is fully reassembled, the mid-base driver mounted, the crossover securely mounted, all the wiring securely tucked away there, the tweeters permanently and securely mounted. Now we're gonna refit the door trim and enjoy our new audio system because the other door is already done, baby.